So the world of film scanning is an interesting place with a whole bunch of different options to choose from, a bunch of them being older, a little more expensive, and then there's some newer options as well that are a little cheaper, but it can be difficult to know which one is right for you and the type of work that you do. So today in this episode, I wanna take a look at one of the cheaper, newer options that is available on the market and just see how it performs. So I personally own a Nikon Super Cool Scan 9000. I've had this for about six months now. And before this, I mainly used an Epson flatbed. And you know, not that I shoot much 35 mil, but whenever I scanned 35 on the flatbed, I was never happy with the results. And when it comes to newer dedicated 35 mil scanners, really the plus techs are probably the most common and also the most affordable. And I have often heard good things, but I really wanted to just try one out for myself and also compare it against the Nikon, not you know, assuming that it's going to be as good, but just using the Nikon to give us a bit of a benchmark to compare the images against. So what I did is I went out and I bought a Plastec Optic Film 8100 so we could do some scans, look at the results, just in hopes that this helps anyone who's potentially been thinking of buying one of these. When it comes to price and specs, I paid 195 pounds for the Plus Tag, and that was brand new in the box, shipped. That's around $250 US, which is very affordable in my opinion. For specs, Plus Tag lists this model at 7200 for its max resolution, but with most cheap scanners and what I've read on the internet, it's really around half of that, which is still pretty close to the Nikon. Plus Tag lists this model's D-Max at 3.6, so I was very curious to see how it would fare in higher contrast or more extreme conditions. On the other hand, the CoolScan's listed at 4,000 for its max resolution, and that's a true optical DPI, and it will resolve detail at that number. For D-Max, Nikon lists the CoolScan 9000 at 4.8, so quite a jump up from the Plus Tech, and was very curious to see how the two would compare. So the first thing that really jumped out to me is the size of the Plus Tech. This thing is super tiny. I don't know if that should have been really that shocking to me, but I think it's because I use the cool scan and this thing is massive. You need like a separate desk for it. Whereas this, it sat on the desk really nice. I just had it beside the monitor. So that's a huge plus with this thing and something that, yeah, really kind of caught me off guard. Uh, when it comes to film holders, you get two different holders with the plastic. You get one for mounted slides and then you just get one for strips of film. So this is that holder, just super basic. It's just got this hinged kind of lid. You lay your film down and then you just close it, click it shut. And all the film that I scanned was very flat. So it, it worked really nice. Um, I don't know how this would work with film that's curled or cupped. I don't have any, unfortunately, so I couldn't test it out. But yeah, I mean, not bad overall. Uh, but when it comes to usage, one of the big knocks on the Plastec is that you have to manually advance this and scan one frame at a time. So with something like the Nikon, since it's auto feed, you can batch scan and the holders themselves hold two strips of six frames. So you could batch scan basically 12 frames at once. Whereas with this one, you're kind of just sat there and you have to manually advance this frame by frame. <laughs> So jumping into scanning for this test, I'm gonna be using ViewScan to scan a raw DNG file, and then we're gonna take those files and use Negative Lab Pro to do the conversions. That way the process is the exact same for both machines. Okay, so got all the images loaded up here. But what I did with the Plus Tech is, since the Plus Tech lists their optical resolution as 7200 DPI, I went ahead and scanned that, but I know oftentimes with cheaper scanners, they'll list higher resolutions than they actually are. So I did some research and a lot of people were saying they scan at 7200 and then they down res to half of that to 36. So that brings it in and around the Nikon range, which is 4000, but the Nikon is actually a true 4000. It does actually resolve detail at 4000, not like the Plastec where I really noticed it, to, it was kind of soft and and whatnot, but I did some tests as well where I actually scanned at 3600 and then compared the, the 3600 to the 3600 down res, and the one that started off at the higher res actually looked a little bit better. So that's what I did for all of these. So the cool scan and the Plastec versions are very close in size, but we got our first image here. So I did kind of a wide range, bit of a variety of images, uh, you know, different lighting scenarios, different contrast scenarios and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, as you'll see, I was surprised by the results. Basically, I didn't expect the Plus Tech to be this good, but you're gonna see as we jump into things here. So this first image, this is the cool scan, and you'll see that if we zoom in, 
Uh, resolves detail really nice on these on these 35 millimeter negatives. Uh, this scene's great. Just there's obviously a ton going on, a lot of ton, uh, a lot of fine detail, and the Nikon did a really good job uh, at resolving it. So we'll jump to the Plastec, and right away you'll notice a little bit of a difference. I'll pull these up as a side by side, but the kind of the recurring theme that I noticed was that the Nikon just had nicer colors right off the bat, and they seem kind of more rich and a little more vibrant. Um, and I'll kind of dig into that a little bit and we'll do some edits, but let's just pull up a side by side here. So that's a Plastec on the right. We'll put the Nikon on the left and you'll see the difference right now with colors. Obviously you could go and you could edit the Plastec a little more. We will, but you'll see the colors just never seem as nice. They seem a little, I guess, like smoother, a little more rich in the Nikon version. But if we just look at detail, so we have the Nikon on the left and we have the Plastec on the right. And you'll notice the Plastec actually looks pretty good. It's not as good as the Nikon, which I didn't expect it to be, but it does look really nice considering this is like a $250 or $300 scanner. And for sharpening, I just used the sharpening in Negative Lab Pro, one of their kind of presets for all of the images. So it's the same across the board and the TIFFs here have no sharpening whatsoever. But the Nikon definitely resolves that like very fine detail. Uh, better than the plus tech but you know my previous experience like i said was scanning 35 mil on a flatbed and i just found the scans were often really soft and you had to hit them with sh pretty heavy sharpening to start bringing some detail back but what we'll do is let's so this is the plus tech let's add some sharpening to this so right now we are at zero let's hit hit it with 40 points you'll see it does start to sharpen up quite nice uh, but with the Nikon, so this has had no sharpening to the tip applied. If we do the same, just because the Nikon's starting out with, you know, a little bit better fine detail, these files really sharpen up nice, as you'll see. We'll go back to a comparison here. Let's close that. So we'll put the Plastec on the right, Nikon on the left. So they look, they both look good. Like, it, it, this is all going to come down to personal preference, depending how picky you are. This could just be splitting hairs. The Nikon, I consider to really kind of be the best of the best before you step up to like drum scanning and stuff. And it does show that here. But I was expecting the Plus Tech to be quite a bit worse, to be honest. So really interesting to see the difference between the two. Let's jump back here to the main view. So we will go to the next image. This is the Nikon once again. And I thought this would be a neat image. This is Portra 400, just because we have this, uh, you know, these bright highlights here and then this interesting kind of transition from shadow to highlight areas. Um, so the Nikon handled it really nice and you'll, you'll see kind of the biggest difference. I'll pull up a side by side just to start with. We'll put the Nikon here on the left. And if we pull up the Plastec on the right, so you'll see again, you know, the colors on the Nikon are definitely a little bit nicer, a little more rich, especially in the sky here and stuff. But you will see that the tones are a lot kind of smoother uh, on the Nikon version. Uh, the Plastec did a pretty good job considering this is, you know, really kind of bright sunlight. But, you know, they aren't as smooth. The transition isn't as nice kind of along this um, subject here in the middle of the frame. But still, you know, fairly impressive. The one interesting thing, and I kind of noticed this trend throughout though, uh, if we go in, we'll actually just look at the detail first. So Nikon on left, plus tech on right. Yeah, I mean, this may be tough to see because YouTube is, the compression is probably killing this a little bit. I'm gonna put a link below. I'll put all of these images uh, in a zip file if you wanna download them and check them out. That's when you'll really be able to notice the biggest differences. Nikon looks better, but the plus tech, it does look really good. But yeah, check this out. So right here, you'll see these kind of horizontal lines running across the image. They look like scratches. You can see one of them very faintly here in the Nikon, um, but this one doesn't exist in the Nikon. So I noticed that the Plus Tech for some reason was you know, revealing a lot more kind of scratches and, and damage and dirt. I, I don't know why, because obviously the Nikon um, you know, is resolving more detail. So I don't know why the Plus Tech is showing more of this, but even if we look up here in the sky, you know, there's a bunch of, little marks and stuff that aren't showing up in the Nikon version. And I definitely did not have any uh, infrared dust removal or anything like that on for the cool scan. And you'll notice this trend, so really strange. Like there's this one up here uh, for the Plastec, but it doesn't exist on the cool scan version. So 
Yeah, very strange. But I mean, these two images aren't that far off. Again, the Nikon, the colors look great. The fine details a little better, but impressed by the plus tech, I gotta say. This will be an interesting one. This is a high contrast. You know, I was really curious to see about how the plus tech would handle this one, just because we have these really kind of bright highlights, the sun that's coming in, and then we have these deep shadows. Uh, so this is Nikon. Let's go to the comparison view. So Nikon on the left again, Plastec on the right, and you can really see that damage I was talking about and dust. I don't know why it's so much more apparent here on the Plastec, but just really strange. Uh, but when it comes to these highlights, I gotta say I was impressed. This is where I thought the Plastec was going to struggle the most, but they actually look good on both images. Um, they look really good on both images, especially the Plastec, which is impressive. Uh, if we go down to kind of this corner area. Both of them look good as well. Uh, the Nikon looks just a little bit smoother for me, but I mean, splitting hairs here again. Colors again, nicer kind of base to start out with um, on this Nikon version. You know, the blues in the sky are definitely a lot more vibrant and rich, a little less on this version, but uh, still look pretty good. Okay, so we got a nighttime scene next. I was curious about this one as well, just because again, we have these extremes, we have these really deep shadows and these kind of bright highlights. So this is Nikon, did a great job. It looks really nice. Go to comparison view, throw that there and then we'll open up the plus tech on the right. And you'll notice, so right here, this is kind of one of the most apparent differences so far to me. The shadow areas on the plus tech, you'll see there's kind of a lot of magenta in there. Whereas if we look at the Nikon version, they, they're really clean still. Uh, so the Plus Tech starting to struggle a little bit more there. And then these weird kind of uh, vertical lines that aren't on the Nikon version. So more of that kind of damage, which is strange. Uh, colors look nicer on the Nikon version, more rich, you know, this reflection, this neon reflection. But, you know, when it comes to detail, uh, the Plus Tech version does look good. Again, especially we went and say sharpened this. We'll just do it kind of rough here, but if we added a bunch of sharpening, you, you know, these files do sharpen up nice. Not as nice as the Nikons, but uh, I mean, for a 35 millimeter negative on like a $250 scanner or $200 scanner, wherever you, you know, if you buy it used or something, the results are, they're nice. Uh, and then also up here, so we'll go to these bright lights up here. You'll see the uh, tones are a little bit smoother on this Nikon version, especially if we look here where there's this kind of transition from dark to light. You'll see they aren't as nice on the Plus Tech, but personal preference, like something like this might not be a big deal to you. So this is gonna be all dependent um, on what you prefer, especially depending on, you know, the, the price gap between these two scanners is highest. Even if you went and found like a CoolScan 5000 or something, you're still gonna pay a lot more than the Plus Tech. But what could be interesting, maybe let's go ahead, we will, let's just jack these shadows way up on this Plastec version. Uh, and then we'll just go quickly and we'll do the same thing here on the Nikon. And then we'll go back to the side by side with both. So Plastec on the right here. You'll see that the Nikon is held up way nicer. Obviously this is extreme. We've opened the shadows up by a hundred, uh, but just, you know, a lot of kind of color noise and color cast there in the shadows on the Plastec. The Nikon's held up really nice. So, you know, for me so far, and this isn't surprising, the Nikon is just giving you a super flexible file. You know, these really rich colors, this really kind of nice fine detail. Uh, but for most situations, uh, this Plastec, it does hold up nice, I gotta say. Interesting, okay, so next one. This is another fine detail one. This is actually Kodak Gold. Everything so far has been portrait, so this is kind of the first consumer film stock. But let's just go ahead and zoom into this area is what we'll look at for detail. And we have these, you know, full sun on the hood of this car. Uh, so let's go ahead, we'll pull up a comparison view, throw the Nikon up there, zoom in and then we'll pull the Plastec up here on the right. So yeah, again, a little bit nicer on the Nikon, both Scanners have done a really good job handling the exposure in this scene. I would say the tones, the highlights on the cool scan look a little nicer. They're a little bit flat, just on this Plastec version. Um, and then the colors as well uh, are a little more pleasing on this cool scan version. 
But yeah, detail is not that far off. Definitely, you know, it's resolving better on the Nikon, but let's, for fun, we won't add any sharpening to the Nikon. I know that's not fair, but just to see if we can get, you know, this plus tech looking a little bit more like the Nikon if we sharpen it up, which you start to be able to pull some pretty nice detail out of, you know, the background here. So really interesting, like I said, I'm pretty surprised so far. Um, next one, so this is kind of a fun scene. There's a lot of color in this one. I thought it would be interesting. And the biggest difference that I noticed right away with this scene, if we pull up the comparison, that was obviously the Nikon that we're looking at. We'll put the plastic on the right. The color difference is pretty apparent in this one. Obviously you could go and you could edit the Plastec, you could you know add a bunch of saturation, but I find even when you do that, the colors aren't as rich and they aren't as kind of true or nice. Really enjoy the colors out of this Nikon. Uh, but maybe that's what we will do. So let's grab this Nikon version. For fun, we'll just kind of go a little heavy uh, with the saturation. You open the shadows up a bit, just tweak this a little bit. And then we'll kind of go and do the same. You'll see with the plus tech, we're probably gonna add, have to add quite a bit more saturation. And uh, yeah, the colors don't look as nice. You could obviously jump into the HSL, tweak things, but I mean, the, these reds just look so nice on this, on this Nikon version here, compared to, uh, compared to the plus tech. Just really rich, super nice. And then if we look at the detail down here, maybe we'll check out kind of these areas on the two. Looks pretty, pretty nice on the Nikon. But again, these differences are less than what I expected, I gotta say. And you know, for me, obviously I shoot 120 as well. So the cool scan makes sense. Even if I just shot 35, I like the cool scan and knowing that it's kind of the best of the best until you get up to drum scanning. And it gives me these like really nice colors and this resolves fine detail really well. But I mean, the price difference is huge. And you know, if you're someone who maybe hasn't been happy with your flatbed scan so far, this Plus Tech seems like a really nice alternative that for me at least is giving me way better results than I ever got before scanning 35 on a flatbed. I was just using a V550. So maybe you get better results on like a 750 or an 850 or something like that, but really interesting. So uh, let's go back to this. We'll go to this next one here. So this is the last one I wanted to do. When I was going through the negatives, I actually found a exposure test that I had forgotten about. Uh, so I thought it'd be an interesting one to check out just because I found in the past where cheaper scanners seem to struggle is when you get into negatives that are really dense, they become hard to correct afterwards and it seems like that's where the scanners really start to struggle. So I wanted to see kind of the comparison between the two, you know, assuming that the Nikon was gonna do a lot better of a job. So this is the first one, this is from the Nikon and I believe this was about probably four stops over. It was a very dense negative uh, and the Nikon did an amazing job. Like the colors on this look look good and it actually corrected really nice considering how dense some of these areas were, especially up in the sky here. And this is where I noticed the biggest difference between the two. So we'll go to comparison again. We'll throw the Nikon on the left. And there's a the plus tech. So you'll see there's quite a big difference. I tried to dig into some of the settings in, in Negative Lab Pro just to, you know, pull some of these this cast out of the highlights and stuff. But uh, I just couldn't get it really looking nice. Uh, whereas the, the cool scan was super easy. I don't even think I really tweaked any of the settings in at Negative Lab Pro. And you see the colors here in the foreground are a lot nicer. Uh, there's not isn't it there's not as you know extreme of this color cast that's up here in the plus tech. So this is where I've kind of started to notice the plus tech kind of fall behind quite a bit uh, is once you know you get into these images that are overexposed quite drastically. But also if you look up here, you know, just going back to this whole about the plus tech picking up, you know, all of this damage and dust and stuff, it's really apparent in this image. So I'm curious why that is because I scanned these images pretty much back to back. You know, it's not like the negative sat out and got a bunch of dust on them and stuff, but you know, there's all these little kind of marks and specks and spots, which is really strange. I have no idea why that would be happening. So, but yeah, I mean, overall, I gotta say, we'll go back to this image. Um, this was Nikon, let's load this up, and the Plastec. So, you know, I didn't expect the Plastec to be 
as good as the CoolScan 9000, but I expected these results to be worse, if I'm honest. And, you know, like I said, this wouldn't make me sell the Nikon, but that's just personal preference. I like the fact that, you know, owning this scanner, I know that it's going to give me kind of the best results I can get with a dedicated film scanner at home without going to a drum scanner or something. And, you know, the detail is just pretty incredible. The colors are super rich uh, and it deals with, you know, deep shadows and overexposure. It's just a really solid, flexible scanner. Uh, whereas we saw with the, the Plastec, it's not holding up in those extreme environments as well, but it's still doing a pretty impressive job, especially when you consider, like I said, the price of this thing is like $250, say on average, and the cool scan I paid $3,000 for. So, uh, yeah, really interesting. Like I said, though, I'll leave a link uh, below to these files. I recommend downloading them, checking checking them out. I think obviously, you know, these fine differences are, could be difficult to see on YouTube just with the compression of the video and stuff like that. But really interesting, gotta say. <laughs> So overall, this thing definitely surprised me with how well it performed. And you know, it's not as nice as the Nikon like we saw in the results, but I didn't expect it to be. And that really kind of wasn't the point of this test, but I didn't expect it to be this good, especially for how much this costs. So, you know, I think if you're someone who shoots 35, you want to start scanning at home. This is a no brainer, especially if you looked for one of the older models on the used market, you could probably pick one up for like a hundred or $150 and get some really nice results at home. So hope this was interesting. Hope that it helped answer some questions that you may have had with the plus text. Like I said, I'll link to the full res images down below if you wanna check those out and really get a feel for the difference between the two. And yeah, just wanna say thank you as always for watching all the comments, all that kind of stuff. And I'll talk to you soon.